Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. How is everyone? Uh, let us begin with the recitation of dua and insyaallah may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless our lessons, uh, grant us health, strength, protection, and also may Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us uh, the cure uh, for the current situation. Uh, which is the COVID-19, a vaccine, insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success in both worlds, insha'Allah. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma zi'na ilman nafi'ah. Warzukna fahman wasi'ah. Allahumma faqina fi din. Wa'alimna ta'wil. Wahdina ila sawa'i sabil. اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا من خزائن رحمتك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اما بعد ان شاء الله i would like to share with you what i have uh, prepared and ان شاء الله may it be beneficial amin ya rabbal ala alamin okay i'm using this flow chart Okay, let me go here to the very the very beginning, inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah, how is everyone? Uh, I miss everyone, of course. Inshallah, to see everyone on Friday after Isha. Eh? Uh, it is a great blessing. But alhamdulillah, we still have uh, an opportunity, a way on how we can continue our class, inshallah. Eh? We are still with the book Riyadatul Sibyan. Eh, Riyadh Riyadh Sibyan. This is how you recite or you read eh, uh, with the what we call uh, Romanized. And what does it mean? It means educating children. We have discussed eh, the foreword from uh, Imam Muhammad and also Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ahmad. Eh, the author is Imam Muhammad bin Ahmad Al Ramli. The translation and commentary was made by Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ahmad. Eh, and I will be doing the sharing, inshallah, uh, from what little I have. Uh, okay, Sheikh Abdul Aziz, eh, he not only had been tarbiyah by Ria Datu Sibian, eh, means he was also, uh, his parents uh, were great people, scholars of Islam, and alhamdulillah, uh, also he have taught using the Ria Datu Sibian, eh, he is well versed. Uh, in teaching and educating young children. And so he has his own experience going through the madrasa, going to uh, religious classes, uh, learn under tut uh, under great tutelages from uh, great mashaykh. Uh, and also he has read many books. Eh? But also his profession is also educating children. So he has experience, he has learned, and also now he's uh, able to teach, eh? and also he is also uh, uh, had learned the what we call education and eh? the current education or the modern uh, techniques of education. He have eh? acquired that also. And for myself, uh, I have ten years experience teaching uh, in primary school, and also I have taught long before that, uh, and I've done countless uh, many other sharings. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, this topic is very suitable for me. Uh, inshallah, I will be doing this so that we can uh, remind ourselves and remind all of you out there to learn more about how to educate our children um, in a, what we call uh, accordance to Islam, accordance to the Quran, accordance to the Sunnah, accordance to the upbringing of the and scholars, and the ulama, the mashayikh, insha'Allah. And hopefully, hopefully we are able to apply it, insha'Allah. Okay. Riyadah to Sibian. These are the two books. Eh? If you want to buy it, okay. Both are the same. Only the cover are different. Okay. Uh, so, there are two types. Eh? You can get this at Wada Bookstore. Or you can just Google it and see where you can purchase the book. Eh? But right now, you cannot go there. So, hopefully, they have delivery. This is one of the most sought-after books. Uh, okay, even if you can't finish it, but it's good for you to have one at home, eh? inshallah. Uh, okay, 
So the lesson flow is going to be like this. I'm going to read the original text, the mutun, and then I'm going to read the commentary uh, made by uh, Sheikh Ahmad, eh? uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ahmad. I'm sorry. And then after that, we will do some reflections and also some discussion, inshallah. So these are the lesson flow eh? for Riyadatul Sibian, inshallah. Okay, first we're going to read the text, the original text, eh, written by Imam Muhammad bin Ahmad al Ramli himself. Eh, Rahimahumullah ta'ala. Wa awwalul ashiya hiya al-hadana li annahu ma'a ahlihi amana fayambari fayambari idda'u kulli tifli salihatan bi qawliha wal fi'li ta'kulu halalan la minal haram fattaba'u qalu tabi'u ta'am idha Khobus Rodona eh, Mala Ila Fi'lil Khobithi Akhiran Wa Awwala Okay, so this is the eh, uh, It's so beautiful that the text is input uh, with the right Khofiyah meanings at the end and the rhyme uh, Okay, so uh, So when Imam Aramli write this eh, you, So our topic here today is going, we are going to talk about suckling Suckling is the baby is the one who suck. Suckling is where the baby eh, will gain the milk from. Uh, of course, the the first source eh, for the for the for a baby and eh, for a child to drink the milk is from the mother. Uh, eh? But other than that, sometimes eh, when you have so many children, maybe some of you might have twins, some of you might have triplets, eh? or some of some of our wives. Eh? Some of our uh, Muslim sister, they uh, are lack of milk, uh, so they can, they are going to find a wetness. Uh, and what is a wetness is in Malay what we call ibu susuan. Okay, uh, so even to that extent, Islam teaches us this. Okay, so let us understand what does this text mean first. And the translation was made by Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ahmad. The first of things. Is the nursery period. Ah, so, if you want to start educating your child, the very first time they suckle the milk, eh, that is the first time where they learn eh, how to uh, live, how to survive in this world. Okay? So, to, in order to survive or in order to live in this world, we need education and we need the best of things. So, at the very beginning, like Imam Ibn Abdullah secondary one says, Man ashraqat bidayatu, ashraqat nihayatu. Those who start steadily, brightly at the beginning will end brightly also. Okay? So now, uh, so the one of the early things that a baby start, eh, a child start is with the suckle milk, uh, suckling milk from the, from the mother eh, or from the wet nurse. Alright? Because his family with him are entrusted. Okay? We need to know that the baby are entrusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah trusts us with this baby. Allah grant us this gift. Allah grant us with this uh, greatness. Uh, so, it is uh, a responsibility for us. Uh, so, the family are responsible for this child. So, we must find the best, eh, uh, the best of things for this child. So, the, we also need to find... Eh, the source of milk. We must make sure the mother. Eh, we will discuss this more further, inshallah. Later, we're going to read. It is in. It is desirable that the suckling of every child should be from one righteous in her words and deeds. Uh, so the mother, uh, the words must be taken care of. Eh, cannot spout nonsense. Cannot talk bad words. Cannot uh, spout vulgarities and such things. Eh, must always be in control. Always uh, be zikr. Eh, be doing zikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salawat to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be reciting the Quran, to be reading, to be learning. So, the mother, that will influence or that will affect the milk eh, to be a good meal. We have seen this and we have known this. Eh? Uh, when someone were to drink, eh, that drink, if it's being read, eh, the Quranic verses, uh, good things, the crystal from the water is going to be beautiful and strong. That will determine the quality of the water. But if the water, eh, you spout nonsense, say bad words, say negative things, hurtful words, hurtful things, 
what will happen the crystal will be ugly and eh? the crystal will will not be nice eh? and what will happen eventually eh? the water will be eh? because our body i think it's 70 or 80 percent is made out of water eh? uh, so when we drink good water like zamzam where people read the quran people do ibadah over there eventually the water becomes good and it is true the crystal form zamzam itself is uh, beautiful and strong and it replenish uh, the body uh, but if you find water that is uh, and then you say bad thing it doesn't replenish your body it doesn't give you any benefits or nutrients at all okay uh, so go, same goes to the milk the milk if you read good things inside the quran we have been doing the ibadah inshallah the milk will be uh, uh, fruitful will be beneficial for the for the child eh? uh, so that's why you must and if you want to find wet nurses eh, maybe uh, like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam eh, he has his own uh, wet nurse eh, okay why do the arabs eh, in the previous time they send outside because over there are pure uh, over there they are more uh, clean they speak well and eh? they are more uh, well conversed in their Eh, in their talking, in their speech, eh? uh, and they are more good-hearted. Unlike in those who are in Makkah, and so they are dilute. So many bad things are happening there. So that's why send outside so to get the best of education. Uh, okay. The next uh, original text also explains because there are eight. Eh? These are the other four who eats from the permitted and not the illicit. Eh? Uh, permitted mean which is halal. Illicit means which is haram, which is prohibited. For they have said one's habit will reflect what he eats. Eh? It's true. You are what you eat. If you eat good thing, healthy thing, your body will be vigorous, you will be full of energy, and eh? you are vibrant, you are very positive, you are not going to be lazy. Uh, so that's why. Eh? If you eat halal food, not only from the source is halal, the food itself must be halal. Okay? Uh, and it's not only halal, it also must be good. Must be quality, means it can replenish, give you strength, give you uh, what we call energy for you to do more acts of worship, acts of deed, do your uh, responsibility. If the suckling is filthy, eh, if the source of milk is dirty, is bad, eh, it is illicit, it is prohibited, eh, he inclines towards filthy action. So that baby, that child will grow into something that is. Uh, will become mischievous, will become naughty, will become bad, eh? will have negative. Uh, so that's why we must take care of what we eat. Okay. Next, we're going to discuss about the commentary. Okay. Again, Shia Abdul Aziz have done this. This is not a commentary by him, only solely by him, but the commentary is a compilation of past scholars, maybe the ulama. Eh, starting from Rasulullah SAW and then the Sahaba and then the Ulama, the Masha'i, the scholars eh, and so on and so forth and even his teachers okay, of his experience as uh, a child and educating others. Eh. The nursing period, this is the most important thing. Okay. Uh, commentary, the first of things is the nursing period. Linguistically, Hadona means to keep by one side. So Hadona, Hadona means to give milk eh, but here to keep by one side. Okay. During this period, the mother keeps the child close to her. That's what I mean. Eh? Keep by one side close to her. It is connected to the word hidden, outstretched arm. Okay. Outstretched means you outstretch your hand, which has connotations of hugging and welcoming. So when you held out your hand, tan. but now COVID, you cannot hug. You just put salam mufti here. Eh? Hey, wallah. Salamu alaikum. It's enough already. But eh? usually mother and child, eh? Uh, when you see the baby so cute, you want to hug it and you want to welcome it. Eh? Uh, so that's why you stretch your, you outstretch your hand. That means hidden, means you are welcoming someone. The period of hadona is the time before the child reaches the age of discrimination, tamiz, and is able to distinguish. Okay, so when we talk about child, when we talk about baby, it is uh, they haven't uh, reached the age of discrimination. Discrimination means be able to differentiate, but they are not. They haven't yet reach the age of puberty uh, okay but uh, are able to differentiate hot cold good bad uh, they are able to differentiate okay good evil uh, well, they are able but sometimes and uh, because they have lack of knowledge lack of strength lack of 
uh, internal uh, discipline. Uh, so they might choose the wrong thing. But then again, they won't be a Muslim until they reach puberty. Akil ba, they. Okay. So the second talk about the trust from Allah SWT. You don't choose your family. They are Allah's gift to you as you are to them. So we must take care of our children. You don't just get married. You get married, you must take care of the child. You must take care of the family. That is what we need to do. Okay. Uh, it's enough. You had your time with your friend. You had your time. Now it's time for you to focus and to educate your child. So if you do not have, I don't think it's best that you marry. You are getting married. Okay. That's why when you get it, when you want to get married, you must be ready. So once you enter marriage, uh, you have done everything that you have need to done uh, for yourself, to do for yourself. Now you can just focus on uh, building your family and also educating your child. Uh, because Allah will ask you, why the child doesn't go towards my way? Uh, then what are you going to answer? Uh, why I given you the Quran, Rasul, I give you tradition, I give you so many things, uh, I give you the prophetic traditions and everything. Why isn't the child coming back to me? Why going astray? Uh, Allah will ask you. If we haven't done the effort, of course, eh, everything goes back to the child. Eh, but then again, have we done justice to our children or not? Have we give them the best education? So they are trust from Allah SWT. The child is said to be an amanah, trust, and has been entrusted by Allah to his family. And amanah is a trust granted to someone to look after it until the rightful owner wants it back. We say we are from Allah and to him we will return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi roji'un. That is what it means. Eh? From, we are from Allah and to him we will return. That is his owner and must, he is our owner and master. And the child is entrusted to his or her parents. It's to us to be looked after and cared for. But Ustaz, I send my children to the madrasa, to the school, to the after school care. That is not enough. Parents are the first teachers, the first educator. Education starts at home. Okay? They teach good, but you must do your work. But Ustaz, I'm tired, I'm working, I spend a lot of money and I still have to teach. Of course, this is your amana. If you do not want this, then don't get married. But since you are inside, you cannot go back. Eh? You cannot escape. They might as well accept and embrace your responsibility and role as a person, as a parent. Okay. And then, uh, the one who is given an amanah should be have certain qualities. We must have quality, including trust, with trust, worthiness, honor. We cannot be oh, start my wife didn't help me. My wife so lazy. My wife. Uh, Oh, start my husband, I like this, my husband, I never want to help me. He always, I'm very envious, I'm very jealous of my spouse. Even though you don't say that, you don't say that you are en uh, envy or you don't uh, you say that you are jealous, but from your actions already shows that you eh, are doing that. So what you should do is that, give everything, both husband and wife, both spouse need to give everything on the table to help make sure that the children education is number one. Okay. Uh, so at the very beginning, husband help the wife. And eh? when the wife give milk to the baby, you must be there. Eh? Uh, she asks you to wash the bottle, wash eh? everything, throw away. You must be, eh? you don't say tomorrow I have to work. Don't, don't give those kind of excuse. Eh? One for all and all for one together. Together, do it together. Okay, you must have honor. You must look at your child. Otala give you. Some people Otala doesn't give. But Otala give you. So you must honor the amana that Otala gives you and feel that oh Otala choose me to be a father. Then I will give my best. La you califullahu nafsan illa wusaha. Otala won't burden someone beyond his capacity. And the ability to look after the trust with gentleness and mercy. You must be gentle, you must be merciful, eh? You must be a lovable person. Eh? But when it comes for you to be strict, you must be strict. Uh, strict is also another form of love. But do not beat or do not hit. Uh, we must use our mind a lot before we can use our hand eh, to hurt our loved ones. Because they will get confused. You say you love me, but you beat me. Cannot. Okay? Suckling from the righteous. It is desirable that the suckling of every child should be a form of one righteous in her words and deeds. So the mother must be good, must be righteous. And choose your wife properly. Don't just follow because she is beautiful. She is... Eh, uh, what we call uh, eh, the 
just because of beauty, but you did not check the akhlaq, you didn't check her religious background. Eh? Uh, I'm not saying those you must wear hijab or tudung. Eh? No, you must find those who have the kind hearted, who will take care of the mom, will do everything and anything to make sure that the child grow eh, in a correct manner. Eh? Al Ghazali, Imam Al Ghazali, Rahimahullah Taala, says that whoever is entrusted with the upbringing of a child should have Watch over him diligently from his earliest day and permit none but a woman of virtue and religion to nurse and receive. Eh? Her diet should be eh? uh, permitted things for there is no blessing in milk which originates in forbidden food which should a child be nourished on it and will need native disposition in such a way as incline his temperament to wrong. Okay. Some of you might have this burning question, Ustad. Uh, some of my family members who are living with me Maybe your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, or whoever it is, your brother-in-law, or maybe your brother, or maybe your own parents. Eh? They are not uh, taking care of their words. They spout nonsense, they uh, throw vulgarities. You must be patient about this. Okay? You must be patient. So how do you come about this? Okay? If they still consistently eh, saying all those bad words from the child early, eh? Uh, earlier stage up until when they grow up you must keep reminding your child okay uh, i'm saying this eh? even though you hear all these bad words from your family but never use it always tell them and also make dua for them eh? and try to correct them if you can but if you cannot just make dua okay there will be a time for you to say but don't say directly and then it will cause commotion eh? argument and whatsoever so you tell your child every time you hear those things are being said to them don't follow don't follow don't follow okay and there are many other good words because why is when you spoke this in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will ask what will have you done with your mouth uh, okay okay so must take care of the food the food must be eh, must be halal and toyib okay so don't eh, uh, don't steal and then give to your child. Don't. And if you steal and then you give to the child, eventually the child will eat bad things and then they will grow up eh, unnatural. You want to go then natural. Natural means eh, they're going back to fitrah, in going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verses relate to a topic discussed earlier that is important when considering a marriage partner to look at him or her as the potential father or mother of one student if the mother of your child does not eat from the permitted the child will be brought up on an illicit if flows in her milk and corrupts the child's nature if the child is to be wet nurse as was the tradition in many cultures one should be just as careful about choosing a wet nurse don't just or someone offered you you just give your child away no must make sure must make sure okay it's even better for you to give milk from eh, a formula milk eh, from the tin other than you give someone who doesn't take care of themselves. Okay? Nah, so these are the things you must really, really take care of. Okay? They are what they eat. You see, your children, you look at this picture, eh, where the child is shouting at their parents. You see? Do, do we want this kind of children? I don't think this is funny. For me, this is very rude. Uh, okay? Any parents who think that this is funny, there's something wrong. Uh, understand or not? Even then, but I, I do not want to judge. But then again, you can look at yourself. Do you want this kind of situation? No. Uh, okay. Uh, is you mean I'm I'm talking about I do not want kind on this kind of situation. Okay. And it is wrong. But if your child were to do it, don't say your child is oh last time I fed uh, haram food. <laughs> don't say. Don't blame yourself. I'm trying to say that we do not want this situation to happen occasionally all the time. Children being rude, eh? Stepping on our heads. No. We want them to be following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whatever they eat, you must take care of it. Okay. If the suckling is filthy, he inclines towards filthy actions. Firstly and lastly, we must be careful and circumspect. Must check every single little thing about deciding from whom they suckled and where they eat. The Imam says they are affected by what and from whom they eat. If the suckling is filthy. He inclines to filthy action. Eh? Uh, Khobis. Khobis is in Arabic, which means filthy. According to Al-Munawi, eh? Munawi means reprehensible, vile. 
and contemptible and incompetent. Basically, it's bad. Basically, it is uh, yeah, uh, mischievous. Uh, these are the things. So if we give good things, we will get great things. So we feed our children good things and inshallah, they will grow up into healthy, uh, cultured uh, human beings and eh? Muslims, inshallah. And encompasses the sensory intellectual. If you give them, the food is also for the brain. So the brain also need eh, some food, some nourishment. So you must give the great things so that the mind is nourished and packed with good things. Eh? If we look at the linguistic meaning, we will see the phrase khabas, eh? khabu satun nafsuhu. Means nafs is what we call desires or what we call the inclination, what we call uh, the self, the inner self. Eh? And if it is bad, it is called inner demon, uh, which implies his soul became heavy. When your soul has become heavy, you cannot pray. Or you don't want to pray. You feel praying is like a burden. You will question, betul ke? Is it true or not? Whether when I'm praying here, you will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I see Allah? See, this is when our soul becomes heavy. Or his stomach became ill. And this is the physical side to the verge of vomiting. These images are appropriate to description of filthy suckling. So, when someone were to vomit or feeling nausea or they want to... Eh, uh, this shows that uh, the the food uh, that the food the uh, the the what we call the meals that we be giving to our child at a very young age, uh, uh, it is inappropriate. Okay, uh, the description of the filthy circle lead to both a heavy ego. Ego, you know, as ego, everybody have ego, but those who are able to control their ego, manage their ego, they are the best of people. They don't try to kill other people's ego. You can just eh, control and discipline your ego and causing the child to be sick from the stomach upwards. Firstly and lastly mean it becomes part of his nature and as a result, his limb acts disobediently whether he wishes to or not. So, when you eat something that is bad, the milk for the child is bad. From someone who is never prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't even care about eh, religion, doesn't care about Islam, doesn't care about education, what will happen? The child will grow and uh, resulted and uh, to be disobedient. The natural choice for a child will definitely be a bad thing, be a bad thing, be a bad thing. Okay, whether he wishes it or not. Uh, then he will say, oh, I love bad thing. You know, some people they say, uh, I am born bad. Why? It's because of this. They are not aware of these things. Eh? Uh, they eat, maybe their parents take care of them, but when they eat, they don't think they don't care. They just eat anything, anything is good. So automatically. Their inclination with towards something that is bad, uh, something that is disobedient. They find thrill in stealing, they find thrill in doing bad things, and they even contemplate in their mind how to perform zina. You get what I mean? Uh, to do bad things. Uh, so, see, it's very important for them to start good, maintain good, and end up good. Uh, okay? Now, let's go by the reflections. Reflection the nurse must be healthy alike in disposition in the body. The violence of the passions as well as the humors spoil her milk. The milk may be good and the nurse bad. A good character is as good as constitution. If you choose a vicious person, I do not say her foster child will acquire her vices, but he will suffer for them. Ought she not to bestow on him day by day along with her milk, a care which calls a zeal eh, for zeal, uh, patience, gentleness and cleanliness, if she is intemper intemperate and greedy, her milk will soon be spoiled. If she is careless and hasty, what will become of a poor little wretch left to her mercy and unable to protect himself or complain? The wicked are never good for nothing. So these are some reflection. Uh, eh? Many people, this is not something that is uh, out of this world. This is something that is happening throughout eh? every country, each nation, every, eh? From all parts of history. Uh, so, you eat good, you will become good. Continuously eat good, you will continuously be good. If you re eat something that is bad, that thing is spoiled, eventually uh, that person will. Uh, that's why I don't eat nonsense nowadays. That's why it's more important in this first world country. Eh, we need to be eating good things. Choose vegetables, make sure it is clean. Eh? 
and don't eat too much junk food. There's a lot of junk food selling around. Okay, you can eat, but in moderation. Don't eat too much, and just to taste, and just to make yourself happy. Eh? Okay. The text raises a number of issues. Living in a non-Muslim countries, we have to decide. Eh? Like in Singapore, we are living in a non-Muslim country. We have to decide about the company of our child. Uh, a lot to keep during the early years. In my experience, it is not simply that Muslims should keep to themselves and not allow their children to mix. Okay, that's never what the idea. We are Muslim. We need to be mixing around. Okay, Muslims should keep to themselves and not allow their children to mix. We had a Jewish neighbor who was more careful about what our children ate than many of our Muslim acquaintance. Eh? In fact, eh, uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Aziz Ahmad says that uh, uh, living in multicultural, eh, even um, living in a multicultural, multilingual, multiracial country, we have experiences. Some we have neighbors, we have friends who are not Muslim, who doesn't believe in Allah, but they have the best of upbringing. They take care of their family, they eat very well, they are very polite. See? Uh, so, it doesn't mean that you are Muslim, you are totally good. No. Uh, good can happen to everyone. But whether Allah accept you, whether you accept Islam, embrace Islam, that is another, another thing. Okay? Okay, so... Mixing with other religion, other uh, race are good, but you must make sure that they are properly. Uh, don't be, don't find someone a snobbish, someone who are uh, boastful. Eh? Our son was allowed to go in out of the, her house and never feared corruption eh, through her character of her food. It is true that we were blessed with good neighbors for most of our life, and that not everyone has been that lucky. What is important is that when we make decisions about who comes into our house or where we allow our children to play and eat, we do so remembering that the child is a trust, eh? it's a trust from Allah, it's a trust from our maker that we are responsible for and that we are answerable, accountable for any corrupting influences. So, if your child mixes, eh? al-jali sul su, eh? uh, in the hadith, they say jali su su, jali su su means a bad company. So, our children will also become bad company. Okay, but if you share with uh, which uh, send to them with good company, Jali Susale, Al Jali Susale, the child will be also very good, inshallah. Okay, that's all I have for you, inshallah. Okay, for some uh, what we call discussions, uh, if you have any questions, eh, uh, you can email to me, Muhammad Fatli Ayub at gmail.com. Okay. Muhammad, M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D-F-A-D-L-I-A-Y-U-B at gmail.com And then we can discuss more further, inshallah. That's all for me. Wa billahi topic wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Okay, that's all. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone.